Gotham City was a heavy metal band from Umeå in the north of Sweden, and they released one single, one EP and one full-length album during their career that spanned for about six years between 1981 and 1987. And Gotham City was one of those incredibly talented bands that never got the full attention that they deserved. So in this video we're going to take a deep dive into the history of one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time, Gotham City. Gotham City was formed in August of 1981 by guitarist Morten Edlund and drummer Jonas Östman. They soon recruited vocalist Ola Olsson and bassist Björn Erik Melander, and this quartet recorded the band's very first demo in late 1981. The first demo featured several songs that would end up on the band's debut EP, but also the song Borderline that would later appear on their full-length album The Unknown. The 1981 demo also included a cover of the Green Man Alishi with the two-pronged crown, originally performed by the band Fleetwood Mac, but Gotham City's version was closer to the cover that Judas Priest put out a few years earlier. The first demo also included the song Midnight Hunter, a great song that for some reason didn't end up on any of the band's official releases. Sometime before the release of the band's first single, guitarist Thomas Persson joined the band, and in 1982 Gotham City appeared on vinyl for the very first time with the 7-inch single Gotham City slash Killer Angels, and it was recorded in January and February of 1982, and it was recorded and mixed by Per Sulin and Gotham City. The single was pressed in 300 copies, and it was released on the Brute Force label. And during this time, the band did several gigs in and around their hometown of Umeå. Guitarist Thomas Persson then left the band, and in early 1983, Gotham City entered the Tune Technique Studios to record the mini LP Black Ritz, and the awe-inspiring artwork was made by Anders Selberg, 
and the record was once again engineered by Per Serlin, and it was rumored that they pressed 1000 copies of the album. Black Ritz turned out great, but the band was dissatisfied with the laid-back talkative singing style of Ola Olsson, so Ola was fired from the band and replaced by Anders Sackleson. And this is what Morten Edlund said in an interview from the early 2000s. We wanted to move up the ranks and Sacke proved to be a real good singer, though the split with Ola was not easy. The response from changing vocalists was mainly positive, though there were a few that missed Ola too. He had a different vocal style, says Morten Edlund, guitarist in Gotham City. And this new lineup of Edlund, Melander, Östman and Sackrisson then recorded a 9-track demo tape in 1983, featuring several songs that would end up on the band's upcoming full-length album. The demo also featured a re-recorded version of the song Gotham City, originally released as a single in 1982, but this time with the band's new vocalist Anders Sackrisson at the microphone. In 1984, Gotham City signed a deal with the Swedish label Fingerprint Records that previously had released albums by bands such as X-Witch and Mindless Sinner. And with the new record deal, Gotham City released their first and only full-length album, The Unknown, in 1984. And the album was recorded at Tone Technique Studios in March of 1984 and then mastered at Polar Studios. The second track on the album, called The Beast Will Burn, was also featured on the compilation album The Great Metal Attack Part 1, released in 1984. And on the 19th of September in 1984, the band played a rather legendary gig in their hometown of Umeå. Europe, Sweden's most popular hard rock band at the time, came to town, and local Umeå bands Mog, Witch and Gotham City were the opening acts this night. The entry fee was 30 Swedish crowns, which translates into 3 dollars, 
which in today's money might be $10. Either way, it was dirt cheap to enter. In late 1984, drummer and original member Jonas Östman decided to leave Gotham City to join the band Mog, another hard rock band from Umeå. And in the 90s, Jonas would join Yngve Malmsteen's band. And bassist Björn Erik Melander also left the band in 1984. In 1985, Gotham City recorded a live demo entitled Live in Umeå, and these recordings were originally made for Swedish radio. And around this time, Gotham City's label Fingerprint Records started having financial problems, and the label then went bankrupt, and Gotham City stood there without a record deal. Also in 1985, band members came and went. Bassist Jan Olof Persson and former rich drummer Frank Stendro joined the band for a short period of time. But the band then recruited a new bassist in Torbjörn Moen and a new drummer in Lars Åke Edström. And the lineup of Sackrisson, Edlund, Moen and Edström then recorded a two track demo in 1986. And then Gotham City hired a second guitarist in Mika Lundholm. And with Mika Lundholm in the lineup, a private video was recorded of their gig at the Ersboda school in their hometown of Umeå. And to this day, it's the only known video recording of the band. Mr. Lord, lost in time. <clears throat> In 1987, Gotham City still stood without a record deal, so they decided it was time to split up. And Anders Sackrisson and Mika Lundholm continued to play under the name High Tension for a while, and they played some live gigs together. 
and Mika Lundon would later join the Finnish heavy metal legends Oz. And in the 90s, Anders Sackerson became the vocalist in the power metal band Nocturnal Rites. Morten Edlund, guitarist and the only member that was in the band from its formation to the bitter end, retired from the music business. And longtime bassist Björn Erik Melander joined Mag in the mid 80s, and they also recorded some demo tapes with Neptune. So that was the history of Gotham City, a band that since the 80s has achieved some type of cult status amongst metal fans and collectors. But due to the issues with the label and certain circumstances, the band didn't get the recognition they deserved. And living in the middle of nowhere, some 800 kilometers from the capital of Sweden, didn't exactly help the band's cause. And uh, let me know down in the comments section what your relation is to Gotham City. Were you familiar with the band's music prior to watching this video? Or was this your first introduction to the band? And if so, let me know if you agree with me that these guys were something special. I personally think that they were one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time. It's just sad that they didn't release any more material. They could probably have recorded another great album if they just compiled their demo material and put it on vinyl. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. And their music ain't available on Spotify, but I've linked their single, their Black Ritz mini LP and the Unknown LP in the description if you want to hear more of this band, which I can't recommend enough. And their albums often fetch prices in the hundreds of US dollars, but you can as I said check out these albums through the links in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell icon so that you guys get notified the next time I upload a video to the channel. And don't forget to leave your thoughts on Gotham City down in the comment section below. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.